It's nighttime in the big city. Man's wife confronts his mistress. There's a low cloud cover. Two runaways sleep in a doorway. This is Theme Time Radio Hour with your host, Bob Dylan. Welcome back to Theme Time Radio Hour. And this week, we've got kind of a controversial subject. Something you're not allowed to do inside a restaurant or even a bowling alley. It didn't used to be that way. This is something you used to be able to do right out in public. You didn't have to hide in your own house doing it. Today's show is all about smoking. We're not here to encourage it or to glorify it. You're smart enough to look up all the facts. What we're going to do for the next hour is give a look and a listen to what happens when the tobacco plant collides with popular culture. As Oscar Wilde once said, a cigarette is the perfect type of a perfect pleasure. It is exquisite and it leaves one unsatisfying. What more can one want? We'll be examining tobacco in all of its forms, from plant to ash, with stops at, cigar, cigarette, snuff, and chewing tobacco. So sit back, smoke them if you got them, and enjoy the next 60 minutes as we blow a few musical smoke rings your way. To start things off, Tex Williams and his Western Caravan. And we actually teased you with a little snippet of this song on our Death and Taxes show. But here's the whole thing. By popular demand, Tex Williams, with a song he wrote, along with Merle Travis, Smoke, 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 a Cigarette. Now, I'm a feller with a heart of gold with the ways of a gentleman, I've been told. The kind of a feller that wouldn't even harm a flea. But if me and a certain character met, the guy that invented the cigarette, I'd murder that son of a gun in the first degree. Now, it ain't cause that I don't smoke myself, and I don't reckon they hinder your health. I've smoked them all my life, and I ain't dead yet. But nicotine slaves are all the same at a petting party or a poker game. Everything's got to stop while they have that cigarette. Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. Puff, 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 and if you smoke yourself to death. Tell St. Peter at the Golden Gate that you hates to make him wait, but you just got to have another cigarette. On a game of chance the other night, old Dame Fortune was doing me right. The kings and the queens, they just kept on coming around. Then I got a full and I bet it high, but my bluff didn't work on a certain guy. He just kept on a-raising and a-laying the money down. Now he'd raise me and I'd raise him. I sweated blood, I got a sink or swim. He finally called and then didn't raise the bet. I said, ace is full, pal, how about you? And he said, well, I'll tell you in just a minute or two, but right now I just gotta have a cigarette. Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. Puff, 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 and if you smoke yourself to death. Tell St. Peter at the Golden Gate that you hate to make him wait, but you just gotta have another cigarette. The other night I had a date with the cutest little girl in the 48 states, a hybrid uptown fancy little date. Now she said she loved me and it seemed to me that things were just about like they ought to be, so hand in hand we strolled down Lover's Lane. She was oh so far from a chunk of ice and our smooching party was going real nice, so help me Hannah, I think I'd have been there yet. But I give her a kiss and a little squeeze and she said, Tex, excuse me please, but I just gotta have another cigarette. Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. Puff, 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 and if you smoke yourself to death. 
Tell St. Peter at the Golden Gate that you hates to make him wait, but you just gotta have another cigarette. That was Tex Williams. Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. You know, Tex wasn't even from Texas. He was born in Ramsey, Illinois, and moved out to L.A., where Spade Cooley hired him to be in his band. He decided to give him the nickname Tex, because there were so many Texans living in the area. Smart man, that Spade Cooley. At least until he beat his wife to death. Tobacco was first used by pre-Columbian Americans. They used it for medicinal and ceremonial purposes. My old buddy Christopher Columbus, he sailed the ocean blue in 1492 and brought a few tobacco seeds back with him to Europe. But most Europeans didn't get their first taste of tobacco until the mid-16th century when adventurers and diplomats like Francis Jean Nicot, for whom nicotine is named, began to popularize its use. Over the next couple of centuries, the growth of tobacco as a cash crop fueled the demand in North America for slave labor. We'll be talking more about the history and the mystery of cigarettes. I'm a fool for a cigarette. From cured tobacco leaves, such generally known products as snuff, chewing tobacco, pipe tobacco, cigars, and cigarettes are made. More stores sell tobacco than bread. And money spent on tobacco could pay for half our schools. This then is an example of a product that represents one of America's largest farm crops and one of the most controversial consumer articles. There are about 15 billion cigarettes smoked daily, or 10 million every minute of every single day. Some of them, I bet, have lipstick traces on them. Lipstick traces on cigarettes can get you in trouble or remind you of the wonders of the night before. Here's the OJs, real early in their career. This might even been before they teamed up with Gamble and Huff. The Dune and Allen Two Cent song here is called Lipstick Traces on a Cigarette. Here are the OJs. <laughs> Cigarette here on Theme Time Radio Hour. 
the tobacco auctioneer had a rather musical chant, and most people couldn't understand it uh, because he spoke so rapidly. <laughs> The first cigarette factory was opened in 1856 by Robert Golag in Walworth, England. Very soon after the cigarettes were invented, the smoke-filled room became popular. It was the perfect place to hear honky-tonk music, especially when accompanied by dim lights. Here's Joe Mathis to prove the point by singing about it. He's singing along with his wife, Rose Lee. Here they are, dim lights, thick smoke, and loud, loud music. Them lights, thick smoke, and loud, loud music is the only kind of life you'll ever understand. Them lights, thick smoke, and loud, loud music you'll never make a wife do a home-loving man. A home and little children mean nothing to you a house filled with love and a husband so true you'd rather have a drink with the first guy you meet in the only home you know the club down the street dim lights thick smoke and loud loud music the only kind of life you'll ever understand Them lights, thick smoke, and loud, loud music You'll never make a wife to a home-loving man A honky-tonk band Is the only kind of life You'll ever understand Go on and have your fun You think you played it smart I'm sorry for you And your honky-tonk heart Them lights, stick smoke And loud, loud music is the only kind of life you'll ever understand Them lights, thick smoke, and loud, loud music You'll never make a wife do a home-loving man That was Joe Mavis and Rose Lee singing Dim Lights, Thick Smoke, and Loud, Loud Music. Joe is a great session player. You can hear him on records with Tex Ritter, Rick Nelson, Wanda Jackson, and plenty of his own. In 1955, a young boy named Semi Mosley dreamed of making a guitar for the current king of strings, Joe Mathis. A friend helped him meet Joe, and he told him he would build him a double neck guitar. The top neck would be an octave higher than the bottom neck. He called his new company Mosrite and gave the guitar to Joe on stage. You can see Joe jumping back and forth from one neck to the other on some of the ranch party videos that Bear Family has put out. He was an amazing player. You know, some people don't smoke tobacco. They're smoking some other stuff. Perhaps you're familiar with it. Some people call it pot, weed, grass, marijuana, loco weed. Anja, Mifa, Chiba, Sansamia, Chronic, Mary Jane, or Dope. Whatever you call it, you smoke it and you get high. Here's a song all about it. It was written in 1927, though this version's from a few years later. It's Baron Lee and the Mills Blue Ribbon Band, Reefer Man. Hey! 
Have you ever met that funny reefer man? Have you ever met that funny reefer man? If he says he swam to China, wants to sell you South Carolina, then you know you're talking to that reefer man. Have you ever met that funny, funny reefer man? Have you ever met that funny reefer man? If he trades you dimes for nickels and calls watermelons pickles, then you know you're talking to that reefer man. to squirm and wiggle. <laughs> That's that dog. That's that reaver man. question have you ever met that funny reefer man you gotta be smoking something to be calling watermelon pickles you can have your pot and pills if that's your mode but i get my high from smoking soul oh yeah i get up with it down with it love it and can't quit it right on i'm the best that ever did it and got away with it ah! oh, yeah. oh the switchboard's lighting up like a christmas tree people seem to love this subject What's that? T-Bone? On line two? Of course I'll take it. Hold on a second. Hey, T-Bone, how are you? Good, Bob. How you doing? Couldn't be better, but I'm at work, so I gotta keep this short. Well, you know, I was wondering if you had a record called The Weed by Steve Purdy and the Studs. Well, that's a rare on, T-Bone. Where'd you ever hear that? About 25 years ago, I was driving through New Mexico uh, one morning, about two in the morning, and I heard it on some station that just came and went, and so... I haven't been able to find it ever since. I thought it might have just, I didn't even, I don't even know if it exists or not. Well, it does exist, and I'm going to play it for you right now. Here's the crazy part of this record. It's a band of 15-year-olds. Imagine a band of 15-year-olds singing a song about smoking nowadays. The mind boggles. Thanks for calling, Bone. I'm so happy to have talked with you. Well, vice versa. Enjoy the weed. I certainly will. There's nothing better than a nicotine weed A good old weed from the back of the seed A filter tip of weed, that's all I need One that grows from the back of the seed All I need is a filter tip of weed, that's all I need Without a weed I can't even sit Without having a nicotine fit A nicotine fit makes me feel so bad A nicotine fit nearly drives me mad 
of the problems when you smoke is when you're not smoking, you could have them nicotine fits. Here's how nicotine fits work. Nicotine is physically addictive. It alters your brain functions. Every nerve in your brain and nervous system has these tiny little neurotransmitters. Nicotine acts on some of them, tricking your body that it needs more of these receptors. When you started smoking, your body began responding to the nicotine and started growing these extra receptors. Over the years, your body's gotten used to this number of receptors and needs what nicotine can feed it. When you stop smoking, your body thinks these neurotransmitters have been shut off. Your body seeks equilibrium. That's where the craving for nicotine comes from. And when you have a craving for nicotine, the only thing that'll help you is more cigarettes. And that's what we got right now, courtesy of the replacements from their debut album. Sorry, Ma, forgot to take out the trash. Here's Paul Westerberg, the Stinson Brothers, and Chris Mars with more cigarettes. more cigarettes by the replacements. In the 17th century, smoking began showing up in painting. Women were not shown as being smokers in art, though they did smoke in public. The only time you'd see a woman smoking in a painting would be to indicate that she was lewd and sexually available. 19th century paintings during the Oriental craze almost invariably depicted naked women smoking in a harem. In the 1800s, in France, the Lorettes, who were prostitutes near the Notre Dame de Lorette's church, were the first known women to smoke publicly. It wasn't illegal for them to smoke, but if you smoked in public, you were going to be judged. By the way, there's other ways people judge you. They judge you by the clothes you wear, the car you drive. Take the simple baseball cap. Wear it with the bill forward. It tells people one thing about you. Turn it around so the bill's in the back and they're making a whole other choice about you. And that's just a hat. Imagine what they think about the rest of your clothes. Well, I'm getting off the subject. We're talking about women smokers. And the Reverend J.M. Gates, who's never had a loss for an opinion. I'm not sure which way he wore his baseball cap. Matter of fact, I can't see him in a baseball cap. Here's his sermon on smoking women in the street. Ah, uh, I want to speak to you this morning uh, from this subject. Smoking woman on the street. Yes. I'm thinking about it. Oh, yes. Women smoking mm-hmm. on the street. Isn't it awesome? Now I want you to sing a verse of this song. This heart of mine. Heart of mine. That's in my breath. That's in, in my, my breath. breath. Oh, the Lord done change. Oh, the Lord done change. This heart of mine. Mm-hmm. All right now. Smoking woman. Oh, yes. On the street. Amen. Let me tell you. Mm-hmm. Young women, mm-hmm. you may think yes. that you get along very well yes. with the meal set. Oh, yes. But I want to tell you, oh, men, yes. showing up men, yeah. men, oh, yes. single men, Amen. old men, tell them about young men, yeah. single, oh, yes. is not looking no. for a wife no, not. with a cigarette no. in her hand no. on no. the street, oh, yes. smoking no. on the street. Oh, you yes. learned in dignity. Yes, you is. Of your age. Yeah. And of yourself. Well, yes, you is. Men don't love you like they used to. No. You're the cause of it. That's the truth. You're trying your best. No. To look. Yeah. And be as much like a man. Yeah. As possible. 
That is it. And you've carried on so long? Yeah. Until I find men. Yeah. It's trying to change. Yes, but There yeah. I find now men. Yes. Wearing pants. Yes. With more pleats in their pants oh, than women have in their skirts. Yes, it is. And I'm talking about yes. you smoking women. Yes. On the street. Amen. In these public places. Yes. Sailing the highway. Oh, yes. In your car. Yeah. Out on the highway. Oh, yes. Stopping in. Yeah. Lighting your Tell cigarette. Them about it. Crossing your leg. Yeah. Winking your eye. Oh, yes. Get everybody past. No true. And causing men to get in trouble yeah. about nothing. That is you the smoking truth. women. Yeah. On the street. Oh, it's awful. Out in the pub. Yeah. Isn't it awful? It's awful. Nobody yeah. wants you for a wife. No. Not only. Oh, no. They, they, they men don't want you for a wife. No. But they don't want to even uh, associate with you. Yeah. Amen. I'm talking about you. Oh, you. yeah. And any woman, and you, and I want you to know uh, who said oh, it. Lord, any woman yeah. that'll walk up and down the public street smoking cigarettes, mm, snuffing her ashes yeah. with her long fingernails, oh, they call it red as fire, I'm and then calling love. herself somebody. Oh, I want you to know yeah. that I kind of feel like you're nothing but an unmucigated, pufalambial, uh, hey, bitch, or every lie, yeah. just walking the street. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about you yeah. on the street yeah. smoking Cigarette. Oh, yes. Lord, have mercy on such a women yeah. as living this day. That was Reverend J.M. Gates chastising women who want to look and act like men, giving them a severe tongue lashing, disapproving of their smoking ways. But times changed, and women changed with them. Lucky Strike was the first company to advertise for women customers. Their posters showed attractive women, and the slogan, Reach for a cigarette, not for a sweet. Their sales skyrocketed by 215%, and they became the nation's best-selling cigarette in just two years. Women eventually had their own brand of cigarettes, called Virginia Slims, with their slogan, You've come a long way, baby. As a matter of fact, the last commercial for cigarettes shown on television before cigarette advertisements were banned was a Virginia Slims commercial that was shown on The Tonight Show. You've come a long way, baby. Virginia Slims. This is the taste for today's woman. With rich Virginia flavor you'll like. Tailored slim for your hands, for your lips. Virginia Slims. You've got Virginia Slims now, baby. You've come a long way. The Native Americans smoked a peace pipe known as a calumet or a medicine pipe. It was a traditional token of peace. The Lakota and Sioux, among other Native American nations, believed that the white buffalo woman gave their people the peace pipe 2,000 years ago. I've always wondered if you're smoking a peace pipe with someone, would it be impolite to try to blow smoke rings? I'm not really sure, but I enjoy Sam Cooke's song about those ethereal circles that float in the air. Here's Sam and smoke rings. Puff, 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 puff your cares away. Where do they go? Smoke rings I blow each night. they go those circles of blue and white I wonder why do they seem to picture a dream above 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 then why do they fade my phantom parade of love puff 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 oh you can puff your cares away Puff, puff, night and day. Blow, blow them into air, silky little rings. Oh, little 
smoke rings I love Please take me above with you One more thing I want to know is Where do they end The smoke rings I send on a high Oh, where are they hurled When they've kissed the world goodbye Let me tell you that I'd give my life To laugh at the strife Below, below, below Down here below Oh, for I'd be a king I'd follow each ring I blow Smoke rings I love Please take me above With you That was Sam Cooke and Smoke Rings From his album Mr. Soul Some of the biggest smoke rings Could be seen on the corner of 44th Street and Broadway Back in 1941 that's when the famous sign maker, Douglas Lay, designed the Camel Billboard, which puffed out five foot wide smoke rings made out of steam. Mr. Lay also made the famous steaming coffee cup that was at the corner of 47th Street and 7th Avenue. I was just finishing my 199th picture. Never felt better in my life. And then I got nagged into going for a medical checkup. They found a spot on the x-rays. It was lung cancer. If I'd waited a few more weeks, I wouldn't be here now. So why don't all of you do yourselves a favor? Get a checkup. While you're at it, send a check to the American Cancer Society, too. It's great to be alive. Next up, we got a song that uses the word that James Joyce once said was the most beautiful word in the English language. Cuspidor. Here's a song that's been covered by a lot of people. There was even a rhythm and blues version by Lucky Millinder. But this is the man who wrote it. He was a great steel guitarist, built his own nine-string steel that had its own weird tunings. Some people say he was the first steel player to attach legs to his guitar and play standing up. Here's a song he wrote and recorded for Lucho's Imperial record label in 1951. Here's the cheetah back of rag. Billy Briggs. I like to smoke my old corn pipe, but I've chewed tobacco nearly all my life. Ting, 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 chew tobacco, chew tobacco, chew tobacco rag. I even like to smoke cigarettes sometimes, but when it comes to dipping, I'll draw the Cigarettes while the sun goes round, but I'll shoot. 
back and spit on the ground. Ting, 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 chew the back, chew the back, chew the back of rag. Now all day long you can smoke your pipe, and I'll chew the back and spit all night. That was Billy Briggs out of Fort Worth, Texas, and the Chew Tobacco Rag. At the turn of the century, the habit of chewing tobacco was so common that there were cuspidors and spittoons in the lobbies of the richest hotels, like the Plaza in New York or Chicago's Palmer House. Smokeless tobacco is still a $2 billion a year industry, yet I don't see cuspidors anywhere. Where's all that stuff going? Be careful where you step. Because as Willard Scott once said, you should never slap a man who's chewing tobacco. I went to the farmer's market with John Cusack. He had some opinions about smoking. To me, cigars are a much better situation than cigarettes. Cigarettes are compulsive and cigars are kind of a languid, luminous conversation. Like you're going to sit for a couple hours and talk to somebody. If you got to smoke, I would say at least have a long conversation with someone you like rather than just compulsively sucking down a cigarette. That's how I'm going to lie to myself, so that I can keep smoking cigars. Thanks, John. In our food show, we played a rockin' version of Shortening Bread. The thing I like about bands that put out only one record is that sometimes both sides of it are amazing. I turned over Shortening Bread, and I found this. There's Paul Chaplain and his Emirates from Webster, Massachusetts, and Nicotine. <laughs> That was Nicotine, Paul Chaplin, and the Emeralds on the Harper record label from 1960, here on this smoke-drenched edition of Theme Time Radio Hour. Everybody knows about the Marlboro Man. From 1943 to 1944, Marlboro ads were created to attract women. The cigarettes were more feminine. But eventually, they wanted to butch it up a bit. So the Marlboro Man was created in 1955. The music you're hearing in the background is from the movie The Magnificent Seven, and it became forever identified with Marlboro in the 60s. Even after the ban on cigarette advertisements on television in 1971, the Marlboro Man survived. You could see him in print ads and billboards. While the government ban couldn't kill him, guess what did? Cigarettes. Two of the Marlboro men, Wayne McLaren and David McLean, died of lung cancer, but not before McLaren could testify in favor of anti-smoking legislation. Come to where the flavor is. 
come to Marlboro Country. One place a lot of people had their first cigarette was in the boys' room. Luckily, Cub Coda remembered those days and immortalized them in song. Cub started out as a drummer, playing in a band called the Daltinos, and working in Han Dog Taylor's backup band. He switched over to the guitar and formed Brownsville Station in 1969. Here's Brownsville Station. How you doing out there? You ever seen to have one of those days where it just seems like everybody's getting on your case from your teacher all the way down to your best girlfriend? Well, you know, I used to have them just about all the time, but I found a way to get out of it. Let me tell you about it. Smoking in the Boys' Room, Brownsville Station, with Cub Coda. Smoking in the Boys' Room sold two million copies, and was later covered by Motley Crue. Cub Coda was never a big fan of loud rock and roll, even though he made some. He was a devotee of rockabilly, blues, and country. He started a column called The Vinyl Junkie for Gold Mine Magazine. It was a constant booster of music you couldn't hear anywhere else, at least until Theme Time Radio Hour came on. Cub was a good writer and a great taste. He opened a lot of people's ears to a lot of great music, and I'm glad to return the favor playing his song, Smoking in the Boys' Room. Cub passed away in 2000 at the age of 51. We miss him. Gee, we ought to do something, Fred. Okay? How's about taking a nap? I, I got a better idea. Let's take a Winston break. That's it! Winston is the one filter cigarette that delivers flavor 20 times a pack. Winston's got that filter blend. Yeah, Fred, filter blend makes the big taste difference, and only Winston has it up front where it counts. Yeah, buddy, Winston tastes good, like a cigarette chug. Our next song is going to solve a big mystery for all you folks out there who love 60s rock. I'm going to play a little bit of it and listen to the beginning. I preach, my dear friends, you're about to receive on John Barleycorn, Nicotine, and the Temptations of Eve. Perhaps you're familiar with a song called Let It All Hang Out by the Hombres. It was written by Gary McEwen and B.B. Cunningham in 
produced by Huey P. Moe. It was written while the guys were stuck in a traffic jam reading all the road signs. No parking by the sewer sign, hot dogs or razor broke, water dripping up the spout, but I don't care, let it all hang out. You're probably wondering where that little thing at the beginning came from. When it comes from my next artist, Red Engel and the Natural Seven. It's the beginning of a song called Cigarettes, Whiskey, and Wild Wild Woman. See if the beginning of this doesn't sound familiar to you. A preachment, dear friends, you're about to receive on John Barleycorn, Nicotine, and the Temptations of Eve. Okay, that's it, if it's so good. <gasps> oh, once I was happy and had a good wife. <gasps> I had enough money to last me for life. I met with a gal and we went on a spree. She taught me to smoke and drink whiskey, cigarettes and whiskey and wild wild wood. Will you please? Cigarettes is a blot on the whole human race. A man is a monkey with one in his face. Here's my definition, believe me, dear brother. A fire on one and a fool on the other. Cigarettes and whiskey and wild, wild women. Somebody get that bum out of here. Brother, repent or they'll write on your grave. Two women in whiskey, here lies a poor slave. Take warning, dear stranger, take warning, dear friend. They'll write in big letters these words at the end. Cigarettes and whiskey and wild, wild women. Uh, hold, hold it, bro hold it, brother. My friend, I'm afraid you're in the wrong place. We don't sing that kind of music here. Okay, then show us your muscles. <laughs> that was Red Engel and the Natural Seven singing about a plot on the whole human race. Red got his start with Spike Jones, and he played the saxophone. He wasn't only a musician. He was also a singer, a cartoonist, and a caricaturist. As a matter of fact, he designed many of the Spike Jones caricatures that were used in the stage backdrops, print ads, and other band promotions. Sounds like he was no stranger to cigarettes, or otherwise known as smokes and butts, ciggies and stogies, snouts and tabs. Perhaps you've heard them called bogies and darts and straights, maybe jacks and fags. Maybe cancer sticks, maybe coffin nails. Maybe you're from Australia and you call them dugans and rollies. Whatever you call them, light them up. Cool cigarettes were introduced in 1931. They were introduced as competition with Spud cigarettes. And no, that's not a joke. Spud was a real brand of cigarettes. In 1924, they were the first ones to incorporate the local anesthetic, menthol. Among other suggested uses, it was said that you should smoke spud cigarettes as an alternative to regular cigarettes when you had a cold. Menthol was supposed to soothe your sore throat. It's one of the great mysteries of life that I know more about spud cigarettes than I do about our next artist. But that's not going to stop me from playing them. Yeah, the visions and cigarette. You see, now I'm so upset. 
Kovacs was a genius. He was a comedian, actor, composer, and writer, but he was also a big spender and not really a big bill payer. He died suddenly in a car crash and Edie was stuck with the bills. Ernie owed the government a fortune and she decided she would do anything to pay off his bills, especially since the studio where he'd done most of his work was erasing the videotape to record something new over it. She was able to pay the government and pay the studio, saving Ernie Kovacs' legacy so we could see his work today. She hated doing the Muriel ads and could never tell the sponsor that she was allergic to smoke, but it was worth it for her to save the work of the man she loved. Hats off to Edie Adams, sexy, loyal, patron of the arts. Muriel Mild crowd. Pick one up and smoke it sometime. Erskine Caldwell wrote more than 60 books. He's remembered most for two of them, God's Little Acre and Tobacco Road. Guess which one we're concerned with here. Tobacco Road was published in 1932 and it was Caldwell's third novel. It's about Jeter Lester and his family. Jeter was a shiftless patriarch. He managed to both repulse and intrigue readers with his gross sexuality, selfishness, lack of decency, and casual violence. The book is all about Georgia life in the first half of the 20th century, how the land got ruined, the rise of the textile mills, and the influence of fundamentalist religion in the South. If you don't have time to read the book, maybe you'll have time to listen to the song of the same name. Here's J.D. Laddermill in Tobacco Road. I was born in a lump. Mama died and daddy got drunk. Left me here to die or grow in the middle of Tobacco Road. Grew up in a rusty shack. All I own was a hanging on my back Only Lord knows how low This place called a back But it's home The only life I ever, ever know But the Lord knows how I love Tobacco Road Gonna leave and get a job With the help and the grace of God Say 
in my mind again I read you know Bring it back to the back of road Bring dynamite and a crane Blow it up and start all over again Build a town be proud to show Keep the name Tobacco Road Cause it's home The only life I ever, ever know I despise you cause you're filthy But I love you Cause you're home That was J.D. Laddermilk and Tobacco Road. John D. Laddermilk was born in Durham, North Carolina. I'm pretty sure that's tobacco country. And he wrote and performed a number of songs. Tobacco Road is probably his best, but his last big success was Indian Reservation, all about the Cherokee people, recorded by Paul Revere and the Raiders. According to the All Music Guide, Laddermilk withdrew from professional activities and spent most of the 80s and 90s studying ethnomusicology. I don't even know what that is. We gotta go for another week, so I'm gonna leave you with the words of the great Louis Bunuel. Hear this to say about tobacco. If alcohol is queen, then tobacco is her consort. It's a fine companion to all occasions. A loyal friend to fair weather and foul. People smoke to celebrate a happy moment or to hide a bitter regret. Whether you're alone or with friends, it's a joy for all the senses. What a lovelier sight is there than that double row of white cigarettes lined up like soldiers on parade and wrapped in silver paper. I love to touch the pack in my pocket, open it, savor the feel of the cigarette between my fingers, the paper on my lips, the taste of tobacco on my tongue. I love to watch the flame spurt up, love to watch it come closer and closer filling me with its warmth. Louis Bunuel, smoking filmmaker. <laughs> well, that's it. We've covered the pros and cons of smoking. I'm going to empty out the ashtrays, air the room, and get ready for next week, because you know there's another theme just around the corner, and I hope you'll be there when we hold it up to the light. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Listening to Theme Time Radio Hour with your host Bob Dylan. Produced by Eddie Gorodetsky. Associate producer Ben Rollins. Continuity by Eats Martin. Editor Damian Rodriguez. Supervising editor Rob McCumber. Research team Diane Lapson and Bernie Bernstein. With additional research by April Hayes, Callie Gladman, Terrence Michael, Sean Patrick, and Lynn Sheridan. Librarian Robert Bauer. Production coordinator Debbie Sweeney. Production assistance by Jim McBean. Special thanks to Randy Azradi, Coco Shinomiya, and Samson's Diner. For XM Radio, Lee Abrams. Recorded in Studio B in the historic Aberdathy building. Studio engineer, Tex Carbone. This has been a Great Watermark production in association with Big Red Tree. This is your announcer, Pierre Mancini, speaking. Join us again next week for a special encore presentation of Leftovers. 